How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. There's a few things I wanted to talk about in today's video that really caught my attention during week one's games. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the Toronto Defiant's most recent roster acquisition in I'm 37. This guy seemingly came out of nowhere, and I'd say that most people didn't really know of his existence up until a couple of days ago. I personally only knew who the guy was because him and XQC have duo queued in the past. I knew he was a decent DPS player, but that was pretty much it. I had no idea he had any sort of intention of becoming a pro. Not only does this guy appear to be a pretty good player, but his story is absolutely incredible. The so-called Path to Pro speedrunner climbed through the ranks at an unrealistic pace. Let me quickly go over this guy's amazing story for those of you who don't know about it. Trust me when I say that it is definitely worth listening to. So I'm 37's pro career began on March 14, 2019 when he joined the Open Division team Wavecheck. I kid you not when I tell you that I could barely find any information about this team anywhere. Their official Twitter was really the only place I could find information. I'm not sure how many games I'm 37 played during a stint with this team, but after just 10 days, he left to sign with the Overwatch Contenders North America team known as Second Wind. A lot of aspiring pros spend a fair amount of time in Contenders before finally proving themselves to be Overwatch League worthy, but not I'm 37. He only played one game in Contenders before being signed by the Toronto Defiant. The man was able to get out of Contenders after just 7 short days. On April 4th, he was officially signed by the Defiant. And then, I'm 37 played in his first Overwatch League match just one day later when the Defiant played against the Justice. He also played in every single map against the Uprising the next day. It's mind-blowing that this guy was able to come on stage and hold his own after just a few days of practicing with his new team. And that's pretty much it. So what do you all think of this? In my opinion, this is one of the craziest and most unbelievable Overwatch stories we've had in a long time. His path to pro wasn't even a month in the making before he joined the Overwatch League. He went from open division to the very top in just 20 days. You have to be extremely talented to make such a fast jump. Congrats to I'm 37, this is quite the achievement. I will admit that I was a little concerned about the Defiant when Stellar suddenly announced his retirement because I really wasn't sure how well they do without him moving forward, but I'm 37 put all of those concerns to rest with his strong hit scan play. His Widow in particular has looked really strong to me. I'm excited to see I'm 37 continue his incredible story in the upcoming weeks. I'm sure it'll only get better as he adjusts to his new team. I have to tip my hat off to Toronto. You guys found a diamond in the rough. I'm 37 has star level potential. He appears to be a mechanically gifted player and seems to be really good at quickly adjusting to new environments. And who knows, maybe I'm 37 ends up being an even better player than Stellar was. Once again, congrats to I'm 37 in Toronto. I look forward to seeing what you guys can accomplish together in the future. The second thing I wanted to discuss is the Florida Mayhem. I'm sure that most of you have already heard the news by now, but I wanted to talk about it anyway. The Mayhem have decided to commit to a full Korean roster, which means that Tavik, Apply, and McGravy all got the boot. Seeing them get rid of McGravy in particular was really sad since he was playing pretty well, but this was definitely the right move for the Mayhem. Communication will become a thousand times easier now for these guys. Even if their Korean players were decent with English, I promise that this is going to be helpful. Not having to speak English has made a small difference in their first few games in my opinion. While they weren't able to win either of their games during week one, they were able to look competitive against the Spitfire and take- I hate to say this Florida fans, but the Mayhem are still a pretty mediocre team regardless of these recent roster changes. It's unfortunate, but it is the truth. They don't exactly have the most talented players out there. I like Zaya player, but that's pretty much it. Some of the other players have looked decent at times, but no one has really stood out. The Mayhem still lack star power, and I don't see that changing unless they sign some new faces. I kind of feel bad for Tavik, McGravy, and Apply. None of them have jobs now, and their futures are uncertain. I'm especially worried about Tavik, though. This guy was once a legend, but now he just looks more and more washed up every time he plays. I wish all three of these guys the best in their future endeavors, and I will continue to support them regardless of what they do. The final topic of the video is the Boston Uprising. Yet again, they pulled off a reverse sweep, which now makes three in a row. That's an Overwatch League record if you weren't already aware of it. This team continues to prove why they're the ultimate underdogs of this league. Even when they seem like they're down and out, they still find a way to turn it all around. And it's not like they reverse what bad teams either. They did it against three decent teams, which makes it look even more impressive. Everybody seems to be doing pretty well right now too. I feel like everyone's been contributing in one way or another. The big standouts in the last two games for me have been Color Hex, Blase, and Fusions. Color Hex and Blase have been popping off in late game scenarios on DPS, and Fusions is proving why he isn't just good at Reinhardt by having some good outings on Orisa, Wrecking Ball, and Winston. I like how scrappy this Boston team is. They've quickly become one of my favorite teams to watch. They feel like a team that you can just get behind with that underdog mentality. This team is so good at bouncing back from adversity, and I honestly love it. 
They know how to stay cool, calm, and collected, even when things aren't going their way. I originally thought that Boston would suffer in a non-goats meta since Fusions is just so nasty on Reinhardt, but that's clearly no longer the case. I don't feel that way at all anymore. They're probably better, if anything. Color Hex and Blase have looked so much more comfortable when they're not stuck on Brig and Zarya. Even though the Uprising are looking good at 6-3 and three right now, I am still a little worried about them. Sure, they've been winning, but reverse sweep victories show that there is still a lot of room for improvement. They have to work on this consistency issue. Having to mount these ridiculous comebacks every single game is just way too stressful, and not just for the players and the coaches, but also for the fans. The Uprising need to fix their issues ASAP. I promise you that the Magic is going to run out one of these days, and especially if they go up against a team that's even better and stronger minded than one of the teams they've already faced. I highly doubt they'd be able to do this against a team like Vancouver or San Francisco. The Uprising could be a really scary team if they can build up their confidence and be a little bit more consistent. This is a team you definitely want to keep an eye on for the next few weeks. And with that being said, that's everything I wanted to discuss in today's video. If you enjoyed this content, then be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, this is ATP, signing out. Peace.